Hello everyone, this is Gamer Ranger coming at you once again. Today, we're going to continue with another one of my Warcraft Rumble gameplay videos. This will be Warcraft Rumble number 7, gameplay number 7. We're going to be doing some quests and we're going to be doing some arc light surges. For now, we're going to be doing quest in this um, segment and the next one we're going to be doing some uh, we're going to be doing the arc light and also I'm going to start doing uh, PvP now that um, I'm skilled enough I'm not so high level but I, I'm getting up there especially now that I'm getting a sense of what I like and what I don't like but anyways and we're going to continue with the Warcraft Rumble. I mean, with the Dark Hours. But that too. Uh, I did want to say before we started that um, I have an idea how I think I want to do this. Because I am doing this off of my, um, off of my iPad. And unfortunately, I don't have enough space to do my Warcraft, and I don't have enough space to do that with my Diablo Immortal. Unfortunately, I ran out of space. So for Diablo Immortal, I won't be bringing as much out as I wanted to. But anyways, I was thinking, sorry if that was convoluted, but I was thinking of to make this easier for the book narration to c take it out in uh, segments you know half hour then half hour there that way it's not so hard with my uh, with my voice and also I did just come back from my ENT if you don't know what that means that's a uh, ear nose and throat specialist a doctor and you know, I was having a little bit of trouble with my uh, with my throat. I was having singing troubles, but fortunately enough, it wasn't anything bad or harmful. Harmful. What had happened is that he thinks it seems that I just pulled the muscle, and I am so grateful for that. Now that I'm saying it out loud, I hear to myself, I am very grateful that I didn't, you know, tear something or I severely damaged something that only, it was only just a um, a uh, pulled muscle. So yeah, there we go. There we have it. I'm very grateful for that. We're continuing with our gameplay videos of Warcraft and I'm going to continue with the narration of the dark hours and here we go again Michael Connolly the dark hours a Rene Ballard and Harry Bosch novel chapter 7 Ballard began putting together the murder book of the Rafa case this effort started with the tedious job of writing out the incident report, which described the killing and identified the victim, but also included many mundane details, such as time of the initial call, names of responding patrol officers, ambient temperature, next of kin, notification, and other details that were important in documenting but not solving the case. She then wrote summaries of the witness interviews she had conducted and collected from Lisa Muir, though Muir's report were short and perfunctory. A summary of the interview with Rafa's youngest daughter had only one line. This girl knows nothing and can contribute nothing to the investigation. All of this was put into a three-ring binder. Lastly, Ballard started a case chrono that recorded her movements by time and included mention of her discussion with Davenport. 
She then made copies of the documents in the GED file and put them in the binder as well. She got all of this done by 5 a.m. and then got up and approached Moore, who was looking at email on her phone. The shift ended in one hour, but that didn't matter to Ballard. I'm going to downtown to see what Francis collected, Ballard said. You want to stay or go? I think I'll stay, Moore said. There's no way you'll be back by six. Right. Then you do mind taking the GED file back up to Davenport? Sure, I'll take it. But why, why are you doing this? Doing what? Running with the case. It's a homicide. You're just going to take it, turn it over to the West Bureau as soon as everybody wakes up over there. Maybe, but maybe they'll let me work it. You're giving the you're giving the rest of us a bad name, Renee. What are you talking about? Just stay in your lane. Nobody moves. Nobody gets hurt, right? Ballard shrugged. You didn't say that about jumping me on the Midnight Man case, she said. That's rape, Moore said. You're talking about a homicide case. I don't see the difference. There's a victim and there's a case. Well, put it this way. West Bureau will see a difference. They're not going to be nice about you trying to take away one of theirs. We'll see. I'm going. Let me know if our two assholes hit again. Oh, I will. And you do the same. Ballard went back to her borrowed desk, closed her laptop, and collected her things. She pulled up her mask for the walk down the back hallway to the exit. There was a prisoner locked down bench there, and she wanted the extra protection. There was no telling what the arrested bring into the station. After leaving the station, she took the 101 toward downtown, driving through the breed dawn grays toward the towers that only seemed lit at any hour of darkness. Traffic had generally been cut in half during the pandemic, but the city at this hour was dead, and Ballard made it to the 10 East Interchange in less than 15 minutes. From there, it was only five minutes before the exit to the Cal State LA campus, the Forensic Science Center, the five-story lab shared by the LAPD and the LA County Sheriff's Department was at the south end of the vast campus. The building seemed just as quiet as the street. Ballard took the elevator up to the third floor where the crime scene techs worked. She buzzed her way in and was met by a criminalist named Anthony Manzano, who had been out at the Javier Rafa crime scene. Ballard, he said. I was wondering who I was going to hear from. It's me for now, Ballard said. West Bureau is running with it, a double, and it's all hands on deck there. You don't have to tell me. Everybody be me is working it. Come on back. Must be a hairy case. More like a TV case, and they don't even want to look bad. Ballard had been curious about why no media had turned up at the Gower Gold case. She had thought that the initial theory that someone was killed by a falling bullet would be catnip to the media, but so far there had been no inquiries that she was aware of. Manzano had led her through the lab to his workstation. She saw three other criminalists at work in other pods and assumed that they were on the West Bureau case. What's the case out there? She asked casually. Elderly couple robbed and murdered, Manzano said. After it paused, he delivered the kicker. They were set on fire, he said, while alive. Jesus Christ, Ballard said. She took, she shook her head, but immediately thought, yes, the media would be all over that case, and the department would throw several bodies on it to give the appearance of leaving no stone unturned. 
That meant she stood a good chance of being able to keep the Rafa case if she could get the approval of Lieutenant Robinson Reynolds. There was a light table in Manzano's pod and spread across it was a white piece of graph paper on which he had been in the process of sketching the crime scene. This is your scene right here and I've been plotting the location of Kaysen we would recollect it, Manzano said. It looked like the shootout at the OK Corral out there. You mean the firing into the sky, right? Ballard said. I do, and it's interesting. We have 31 shells recovered, and I think it adds up only to three guns in play, including the murder weapon. Show me. Beside the graph paper was a clipboard with Manzano's note and drawings from the scene. There was also an, an open cardboard box containing the 31 bullet casings in individual plastic evidence bags. Okay, so 31 shots produced 31 shells on the ground, Montano said. We have three separate calibers and ammunition brands, so this becomes pretty easy to figure out. He reached into the box, rooted around in it, and came out with one of the bagged bullet casings. We have identified 17 casings as 9mm PDX1 rounds produced by Winchesters, Manzano said. You will get, you will have to get confirmation from FU, but to me, as a non-expert, the firing pin marks on these look like, and that would suggest they all came from a 9mm weapon that would have hold 16 rounds in the clip and one in the chamber if fully loaded. Montano had referenced the firearms unit, which was no longer called that because of the other meaning associated with the acronym. It had been updated to the firearms analysis unit. I think you are probably looking at a Glock 17 or a similar weapon there, Montano said. Then we have 13 casings that were 40 caliber and manufactured by Federal. At looked at our ammo catalog and these likely were jacketed hollow points but fu would have an opinion on that and of course these could have been fired by any number of firearms 12 in the clip one in the chamber okay ballard said that leaves one manzano reached into the box and found a bag containing the last casing yes he said and this is a Remington 22. Ballard took the evidence bag and looked into the brass casing. She was sure it was from the bullet that killed Javier Rafa. This is good, Anthony, she said. Show me where you found it. Manzano pointed to an X on the crime scene schematic that had the marker number one next to it and was inside the re rectangular outline of a car. To the right of the car was a stick figure that Ballard took to be Javier Rafa. Of course, the victim was transported before we got there, but the blood pool and the EMT debris marked the spot, he said. The casing was 9 feet 2 inches from the blood and located under one of the wrecks in the tow yards, the Chevy Impala, I believe. Ballard realizes that they had caught a break, the injected shell had gone under the car and that made it difficult for the gunman to retrieve it before they started to notice that Rafa was down. She held up the evidence bag. Can I take this to firearms? She asked. I'll write a COC, Manzano said. He was taking about a chain of custody receipts. Do you know if anyone is over there? Ballard asked. Should be somebody, Manzano said. They're on max deployed like everybody else. Ballard pulled her phone and checked the time. Tactical alert would end in 15 minutes. It was Friday and the January 1st holiday. The firearms analysis unit might possibly go dark. Okay, let me sign the COC and get over there before they leave, she said. 
the FAU was just down the hall and Ballard entered with 10 minutes to spare. At first, she thought she was too late. She didn't see anyone. And then she heard someone sneeze. Hello? Sorry, someone said. Coming out. A man in black polo shirt with the FAU logo stepped out from one of the gun storage racks that lined one wall of the unit. The unit had collected so many varieties of firearms over the years that they were displayed in rows of racks that could be close together like an accordion. The man was carrying a feather duster. Just doing a little housekeeping, he said. We wouldn't want to shy hands guns to get dusty. It's part of history. Ballard just stared for a moment. Mitch Elder, the man said. What can I do for you? Ballard identified herself. Are you about to leave at the end of the tack alert? She asked. Supposed to, Elder said. But what do you got? It had been Ballard's experience that gun nuts always act like a challenge. We had a homicide this morning, gunshot. I have a casing and was looking for a make on the weapons used. Maybe a NIBIN run? The National Integrated Ballistic Information Network was a database that stored characteristics of bullets and casings used in each crime. Each carried markings that could be matched to specific weapons and compared crime to crime. Casings were a better bet than bullets because bullets often fragmented or mushroomed on impact, making comparison more difficult. Ballard held up the clear evidence bag with the casing in it and asked bait. Elder's eyes fixed on it. He didn't take long. Well, let's see what you got, he said. Ballard handed him the bag and then followed him to a workstation. He put on gloves, removed the casing, and studied it under a light magnifying glass. He turned it into his fingers, studying the wren for marks left by the weapon that had fired it. Good extractor marking, he finally said. I think you're looking for a Walter, but we'll see. This will take a little time for me to encode. If you want to go get breakfast, I'll be here when you get back. Nah, I'm good, Baller said. I have to make a call. Then maybe we can get breakfast after we're done. Uh, I think I'll probably need to get moving with the case, but thanks. Suit yourself. I'm going to find an empty desk. She walked away, almost shaking her head. She was annoyed with herself for adding the thanks at the end of the rejection. She found a workspace that was completely bare except for a phone on the desk. She pulled her own phone and called Robinson Reynolds, clearly waking him up. Ballard, what is it? He seemed annoyed. You told me to update you no matter the time. I did. What do you got? I think our shooter was a homicide, a murder, and I want to stick with it. Ballard, you know, you know it needs to go too. I know the protocol, but West Bureau is running with a big media case, and I think they would welcome me taking off their hands, at least until they came up for an air on the double they've got. You're not a homicide detective, Ballard. I know, but I was. I can handle this, LT. We've already conducted witness interviews and I've been to forensics and now I'm at firearms running NIBIN on the shell we found. You shouldn't have done any of that. You should have turned it over as soon as you know it was an, an accidental. West Bureau was busy. I ran with it. We could turn it over now but they won't jump on it and hours and maybe days will go by before they do. It's not my call, Ballard. It's their call. Lieutenant Fuentes is over there. Can you call him and grease this for me, LT? He'll probably be happy we want to take it off his hands. 
There is no we on this, Ballard. Besides, you're supposed to be off duty starting ten minutes ago. I got no overtime for you. I'm not doing this for OT. No greenies on this. Greenie was a reference to the color of the 3x5 cards that had to be filled out and signed by supervisor authorizing overtime work. No greenies? Robinson Reynolds asked. Nope, Ballard promised. What about the Midnight Men? And where's Muir in all of this? You're supposed to be working together. She stayed at the station to start putting together the murder book and writing up witness statements. Nothing came up on the Midnight Men, but I'll still be working on that. I'm not dropping it. Then that's a lot on your plate. I wouldn't ask for this if I couldn't handle my plate. There was a pause before Robinson made a decision. Okay, I'll call the two Fuentes. I'll let you know. Thanks, LT. The lieutenant disconnected first, and Ballard walked back over to Elder's workstation. He was gone. She looked around and saw him sitting at a computer terminal by the window that looked out on the 10 freeway. It meant that he was on the NIBIN database. She walked over. Ballard, you've got something here. Elder said. Really? Ballard said. What? Another case. The bullet is linked to another murder. Almost 10 years ago up in the valley, a guy got shot in a robbery. The shells match. Same gun was used. A Walther P-22. Wow. Ballard felt a cold finger go down her spine. What's the case number? She asked. Elder dictated a number off the computer screen. Ballard grabbed a pen out of a cup next to the computer terminal and wrote the number in her notebook. What's the Vic's name? She asked. Lee Albert, DOD, 2211. She wrote it all down. It's an open case? She asked. Open unsolved, Elder said. An RHD case. Robbery Homicide Division Ballard's old unit before she was unceremoniously shipped out to work the late show in Hollywood. But 2011 was before her time there. Does it say who the I.O. is? She asked. It does, but it's out of date, Elder said. Says here the investigator officer is Harry Bosch, but I knew him and he's been retired a while. Ballard froze for just a moment before managing to speak. I know, she then said. Okay, everyone, that wraps it up for tonight. At least for tonight. We're going to stop here before we continue on to chapter 8. And that will be it for tonight. Once again, thank you so much for coming back and visiting. For those newcomers, thank you for visiting. I hope all enjoyed. And for the rest of the gameplay video, I hope you like it and enjoy it. Please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thank you so very much. So very, very much, my dear, kind reminders. I hope you ha guys have a great night or a day or whatever time you're having, whether you're already great or you're still meek. Whatever the case, I hope you guys enjoy. I hope you guys love and I hope you guys return and I hope to see you guys one more time tomorrow or whatever the case may be. Anyways, this is taking way too long. Have a good night, you guys, or a good morning, good day, whatever. You know what I mean. And as always, volume change in three, two, one.
You cannot bring us any doubt! Welcome to Boom! 